honeybees have some fascinating abilities, among them being able to communicate by performing a unique dance. It informs hive mates where a newly discovered food source is located. Every cycle of this waggle dance roughly describes the shape of the figure eight. Let's rewind and look in more detail. The bee only waggles on a part of its route, the straight run, indicated here by the waved line. The secret lies in the direction of the straight run, or to be more precise, in the angle between the straight run and the perpendicular, which in this case is 90 degrees to the left. This tells the other bees that food is available 90 degrees to the left of the sun. If the angle is 60 degrees to the right, they'll be flying 60 degrees to the right of the sun. So the question is, was the bee using language? Was the bird using language? Was the whale using language? Depending on how we answer that question, a lot of things follow. If we do agree that animals can use language to communicate, I think it becomes a little bit clearer that human language while we may be able to abstract ourselves into the position that it uh, makes available some objective knowledge of the world, in reality it's a human act of communication that has relevance only to other humans who speak the same language and care about the same things that we do, and that outside of that context it is nonsense just like whale song is nonsense to humans. What is human language but, you know, a purely contingent behavior which outside of the context of human relations is completely nonsensical? Why do we assume that our particular way of speaking is open to some transcendent truth, that we could represent the transcendent objective truth with our language, while when we listen to birds chirping, we assume it's just, you know, joyful nonsense. Why is our language different? I mean, sure, it may be more complex, or at least we assume it is. But, so, uh, at what point is the complexity reach a level where all of a sudden this transcendent quality arises called the intellect, called the consciousness or the soul, you know, because I think in Mendham is kind of, while he doesn't want to uh, accept any supernatural um, theories, is himself relying on one because if the intellect is not at all conditioned by the flesh, 
Where is it? What is it? How does it happen? Why is human language so special that it can objectively mirror the world? So I, I think my basic claim throughout all of my posts on language has been that language is not a representational um, activity. When we use language, we're not describing an objective world trying to mirror some external state of affairs with this sound or written artifact. What we're doing is expressing meaning which makes sense only to other human beings and to other human beings who speak the same language as us and, like I said, who care about the same things as us. Um, just like, uh, you know, we don't understand how birds communicate with one another. We don't speak their language because we don't care about their world. They live in their own world because, you know, they have their own sense of embodiment. They have a different um, array of senses and a different perceptual system which, which enacts a different world where a different language is possible. And if we assume that language is descriptive, that's when this assumption that human beings somehow rise above the animal world comes in. Because when we say we know something about the world, we're not saying that we know something about the human world. We're saying just the opposite. We know something about the world without humans, regardless of human subjectivity, regardless of, you know, the physiology of our nervous system and the limits that that puts onto our cognitive abilities. Or not the limits, but just, you know, well, the boundaries. It's not that I'm trying to demean language. I'm just trying to show that it's not what we think it is and that that's not a bad thing. It just means we're never going to find the one final, objectively true sentence or proposition that's going to describe the external world for eternity and that anyone who reads will just have to admit that it's true that's never going to happen language cannot provide an objective description of the world and i think when we reject that claim we're rejecting the same basic presupposition that lies behind you know taking the bible as the literal word of god that's no different than saying that language can provide objective knowledge. Because whether or not we have an entire library of books that supposes it knows the truth, or a single book that knows the truth, at the end of the day, we're suggesting the same thing, that words, a particular collection of words, whether it's you know a few thousand pages or an entire building full, could contain the truth. And that that truth cannot be denied. And if it is denied, not only... You know, we may ostracize you, or worse, we may kill you. you. You're blasphemous. You're, you're, you know, rejecting everything it means to be a rational human being, and therefore you're not human. So we have to be careful when we want to reject supernatural thought. We have to uh, make sure that we're consistent, and that we don't allow ourselves to just give a new name to the same old. Um, you know, literalization of the logos, of the spoken word's ability to be the final say, so to speak. Because not only is there the spoken word, but there's silence. And if there's a truth, it's got to be just as much evident in silence as it is in speech. So if we're just looking for a certain way of speaking the truth, we're missing the, the whole other side of existence, of silence. We're, we're neglecting it. So if language can't give us the truth, does that mean that no truth exists? No. I wouldn't say that. I would just say that whatever the truth is, it's something you experience, not something that you speak, or write, or read. Not something that you conceptualize, but something 
that you experience, that you are aware of before language happens, before you even think. It's what's between thoughts. That's the truth. 